People know that addictions are bad for them, yet they continue to do things that they don't hurt them. Why? Hi, I'm Allie Beerman. I'm so glad you came by today. You can find me over at yourrelationshipintelligence.com. So let me point out something about addictions, first of all. Over time, it takes more and more of whatever it is that one craves to reach a point where you feel satisfied. So, for instance, an athlete who starts working at it one hour a day and ups it to two and then to three, and pretty soon that person is spending half a day working out because unless he or she has upped it to that long, he just doesn't feel satisfied, doesn't feel good, doesn't achieve the feeling you want to achieve by working out. Now it's interesting to note in today's world, in today's very insanely fast-paced world, people brag about how busy they are and how little they sleep. By the way, that's probably the single most damaging behavior that you can live. Anyway, so a common addiction today. Are you ready for this? A common addiction today is being addicted to stress. Yes, stress. The kind you place on yourself by doing and doing and doing by removing the word no from your vocabulary. So when somebody asks you to give your time or your energy, and if it's your family or your friends, if it's your community or your job, whoever it is that's asking you for help, you just fit it in. Your schedule might be full, but there you go, adding that one more thing, you know why? Because you need to be overwhelmed. You need to have your time filled. You need to be going bonkers so that you feel good. <laughs> what? Did I say you feel good when you're feeling all overwhelmed? Well, you see, your brain is telling you you feel good when you're in that constant heightened state. And that's because you're addicted to the feeling you get when you're in that constant heightened state stay. Here's an example from my own life. Now, this is from decades ago, but it's something I see it all over the place today in people of all ages. I raised a couple of kids who are professionals. They're performers, and they were when they were kids. So we had just an insane schedule of lessons and rehearsals and performances but that was on top of all the places I was volunteering in the schools in the women's center anybody any place who asked for my help somehow I'd fit it in I was what you'd have to call a professional volunteer right I just didn't know it was okay to say no when someone asks for help. Now that left me completely exhausted and totally overwhelmed until my youngest child left home at the age of 18. Now, here's where I see how that nonstop work feeds some people because it's happening out of awareness. Addictions usually happen out of awareness. For me, where I recognize it was when the school term ended, so every summer, and that whole chunk of not having to be in two different schools volunteering, and I might have had that time to, oh goodness, do something for myself that I wanted to do just for me. I felt lost. I felt jittery. I felt like some big part of me was missing. That's like, that's nuts and that's what an addiction is. It's nuts because the thing that you're doing to feel good is not something that's good for you. 
So I recognize that behavior so easily now because I see it every place. I see it when I work as a psychotherapist, when I work as a kinesiologist. I see it just being a friend and seeing how hard it is to get together with somebody because her schedule is so full. Their schedule so full, and they're complaining about how full their schedule is. And yet, who makes their schedules? They do. Now, even seemingly healthy behaviors become unhealthy behaviors when you can't stop doing them, when you need them to feel good. Most people fail to recognize that people often get addicted to emotions. It's the emotions that are driving you to do these things. When you feel defined by your behaviors to stay busy, to be there for everybody, to meet everybody else's little needs and big needs, yo, you are blatantly addicted to your emotions and to the emotion of stress and feeling overwhelmed. Do you know anyone who lives in a constant state of drama? Bet you don't have to think too hard for that one. Not in this day and age. Do you know anyone who constantly gets sick or injured? How about anyone who spews anger all the time? Who do you know? who lives a victim identity, blaming everybody else for their circumstances and how bad they feel. You see, your body has neuropeptides. Those are chemicals that let you feel good or feel bad. Cells have docking points, receptors, for those peptides. Now, when someone who's addicted to being sick and they may think that the only way they're going to get attention is by being sick or hurt. So someone like that has a plethora of feel-bad neuropeptides going in and docking on those cells. Now here's the thing about cells. They're not static. They divide. And when they divide, they reproduce according to the DNA that's in operation at that time. And a quick aside, you know you're in control of what genes switch on and off. Not all of them, but a whole lot of them. So when that blueprint is going on and dividing and making more cells, and it is a blueprint looking for the feel-bad neuropeptides, well, you're just proliferating more and more of those bad feelings and more and, and more and more of those bad feeling peptides. It increases over time because the cells continue to divide, to become more and more. And that's why addictions keep people stuck. That's why addictions keep people enslaved to those feelings, those addictions. Now, take this information one step further. Neurons that fire together, wire together. It's like forming a circuit, okay? So experiences that are related to those bad feelings, they wire together, a whole bunch of them, in your brain. So ending an addiction means you got to do something about that whole network of the addictive behavior pattern, feelings, chemicals that are running in your body. When you feel stuck in your life, realize some sort of neural network is keeping you stuck. You say you don't like the way you feel, but you continue to do the same behaviors over and over and over. Now you know what I told you last week. Einstein called doing the same thing over and over, expecting different results. 
insanity. <laughs> so, if you're going to continue doing the same action, and you're not going to get different results, what can you do instead? Well, you got to act differently. But before, you can choose an action that's new to you. Well, first you got to recognize the situation in which you're doing that behavior that's keeping you stuck. And to do that, you have to live consciously. And the only way to live consciously is to live now and now and now in the present moment. Your past is past and it is not serving you. And yet, if you're continuing those same behavior patterns, you're living your past instead of your present. So rather than going through each day on automatic, live in the now because this is your life. You're the only one who gets to live it. You're the only one in charge. Now, as I tell you frequently, change happens like that. It happens in an instant. And what takes so long is getting ready to change. So how do you know you're ready? How do you get yourself ready? How do you become ready? You decide. I can't tell you. It can be really obvious to me that you're stuck and really obvious why you're stuck. But if I tell you, what's going on, you're not going to be able to make a change. It has to come from inside you. The motivation has to come from inside you. The recognition of when you're doing those silly, repetitive, hurtful behaviors again, you have to recognize that. And when you do, that's when you can choose a different behavior pattern, which will lead to creating cells with different DNA. Now I'm really, really looking forward to hearing from you about at least one aspect of that behavior that's keeping you stuck and what you're going to do differently, starting with noticing. Just notice. Start out at the bottom line. Notice. when. Something in your environment, in your situation, an event is triggering an old pattern of behavior. In other words, your addiction. And instead, notice it and decide, I don't need to do that. I can feel good. I don't have to feel good because I'm feeling overwhelmed. I don't have to feel good because I feel sick or hurt. I can just feel good. And I can move my life in the direction I want it to go. Instead of in the one I feel all caught up in with no choice. Everything in life is a choice and some choices may appear more difficult than other choices. Again, I'm Ellie Beerman. You can find me at yourrelationshipintelligence.com Make sure you notice when you're getting and keeping yourself stuck. And you know what happens if you share down below? Somebody else may read what you wrote and see, wow, I do that too. I never realized I was doing it. Because I'll notice the same behavior pattern amongst friends. Makes sense. We tend to be like our five closest friends. So that should be a clue. <laughs> Just watch and notice how your friends are behaving.